In a post-apocalyptic world, only one woman and her sword stand for justice. Hello and welcome to the weekly VM Campos Comic Book Club. I'm your host, VM Campos. This is the podcast where I review a comic book, new or old, from my collection. This week, let's talk about AXA, number one, published by Eclipse Comics in 1987. Before we move on, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all the good stuff, or even consider going over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash vmcampos. Now on with the show. So as usual, a little bit of behind-the-scenes info. This is the first issue of AXA. Or do you see it? Aha. This is the first issue of Exa Comics, published by Eclipse Comics in the 80s, all new in color. So this was a series published first in European comics by E.B. Romero. And here we have a full color treatment in the late 80s, brought to you by one of my favorite indie publishers, Eclipse. And this comic mixes sort of the swords and sorcery Conan, or Red Sonia, with the Mad Max aesthetic. This is a post-apocalyptic storyline where roving bandits give you no quarter, where might makes right and the weak are meek. That's why we need a tough warrior to protect everyone. There's plenty of action and eye-catching art in this comic, as we will see. And so, spoiler alert, we will be going through the various plot points of the story as we break down the first issue of AXA. Starting with the cover here. I love this cover. This is just an epic cover. Never mind all the trade dress and such. Let's look at the main characters. We have AXA herself. At her side are Matt and Mark Ten. And here's this classic aesthetic of swords and sorceries, of Conan the Barbarian, or Red Sonia, she devil with a sword. But wait, we've also got a mechanical robot guy? Yeah, this is a great melding of genres, post-apocalyptic, futuristic stuff, barbarian, sword and sorcery, and sci-fi. Background is a bit simple, just a simple, you know, sunset or uh, sunrise over there, and they're standing atop the hill. Mark V is very contemplative, he's a robot after all. Matt is a classic brawny 80s character. Got a little bit of the Rambo bandana going on. And, and AXA is both sexy and savage. We have the declaration, she's here, AXA Comics. I think the grammar of this is really weird. She's here, AXA Comics. Uh, and even that this is called AXA Comics. Just a little minor, meaningless nitpick. This was $1.75 when it was published and Eclipse Comics published it. You know, we see a lot of retro logos nowadays, and what I need is a retro Eclipse Comics logo on a t-shirt. So someone get on that. I'd proudly wear it. This is kind of a little uh, distracting where it says, all new, all color. And we show you all the colors here to prove to you that this book is in color. Because at the time, of course, this is the 80s when the black and white explosion was going on. By 1987, it was dying out. But there was a time that everyone could get their own comic in black and white, and it was a glorious time. Now, there was a mini comics crash, but we'll ignore that for the moment. So, amazing cover, which then on the inside cover, we see the backside. Wow, that's pretty fun. You've got the backside of that same scene there, where we see everyone and what they're looking at, which is nothing. So, uh, Mark Ten is there still contemplating, and Matt is there. He's got a knife hidden in the back, and then Exa dominant there. Now, this is the only glimpse of the original art that is in black and white. Everything else is in color. So, that's definitely a choice of, do you like the work of comics in color or black and white? And here would be an example of it in pure black and white, where we have this great brush strokes and the like. Variety of line weights and such. But it's kind of anticlimactic that they're looking at nothing. I suppose they're looking at the credits over here, where we find out that the book is published bi-monthly by Ken Pierce, Inc., distributed by Eclipse, written by Chuck Dixon, and of course, created by E.B. Romero himself. We have a two-page 
prologue before the main story starts where we find out about the destruction of the world. And then this first uh, quote here, I love it. The unthinkable became a reality. And one September afternoon, civilization committed suicide. September, hey, that's when this video is coming out. Timely. I wish they would have also put an actual date, like in the far future of the year 2004. <laughs> or something as ridiculous. But yeah, one day the world will blow itself up. A trope that's been around forever. The nuclear horror was on everyone's mind, especially in the 80s. The narrator further intones, All that the world had been was no more. In its place was a world of death and despair and horror. But... A hundred years after the death of mankind, pockets of civilization began to grow. So there was the end of the world at some point, probably in the year 1998, and then in the far future of 2108, civilization begins to grow. The Dome City, a refuge against the madness of the world outside, a place of order in the chaos of nuclear winter. For some, life in the Dome is too ordered. AXA was one of these. She found life in the Dome a wasted experience, and so she refused to conform. Got some girls gone wild action going on there, and then AXA chooses to go out into the blasted wasteland of the world. She can't live in the sterile civilization of peace. She's got to go out there and fulfill her exhibitionist desires. Plus also, you know, justice by the edge of the sword. So that's the prologue that we get, that AXA was a civilized person of the future, but it's too civilized, so I'm going to go out into the wilderness. And I met up two companions, Matt and Mark V. Though we get no explanation of where did they come from, are they also defectors from the Dome City? I don't know, we might find out in a future issue. Because then the main story begins, AXA the Adopted. I will say, sort of the plot is a little bit trite in that it's uh, marauders in a wasteland and innocent people, and then AXA jumps in. Yes, it's got that Mad Max, Mad Max 2, the Road Warrior vibe to it, but we'll get to it eventually. I love some of this artwork. I'm just a sucker for taking the old technology plus the new technology and melding it. Here we got a school bus, but it's being towed by a a team of oxen. I kind of love that. And then there's the grandpa transporting the kids to safety. But wait a minute, they see a warning message on the road. You are entering the territory of the engineers. All those who enter say goodbye life. <laughs> I don't know if they meant that as comedic, but I laughed. But there's no laughing right on the next page because grandpa gets it. Oh no, sniper shot. The engineers are coming. Now, spoiler alert, the engineers are a variety of marauders. Why are they calling themselves engineers? I'll never know. They really don't do anything high tech. They're not dealing with trains or anything technological, but they're the engineers. And then they're the big bad of this particular issue. So grandpa's dead or grandfather's dead. And then the kids have to survive. Now there is an older character who uh, has to take over for a moment. Now that I think about it, they never say her name, but the youngsters have to fend for themselves from the marauders. And here's one of these other example of they're on a tractor trailer, but they got a skull on it. Actually, I don't think you should actually cover that because that's going to mess with the exhaust, right? One thing that I noticed is that Romero put his signature in a variety of the panels for some reason. We see it there, we see it there, we see it in a variety of places. Like, hey, don't steal my work, I guess. So, oops, they're going to capture the uh, the kids and bad stuff is going to happen, but they fight back. Those two bad guys get it, but they still get overwhelmed and bad stuff will happen. Kill them all. Kill all these little animals. We'll keep this one for a while. No, no. But who's this? Why don't you try killing us first? Huh? I said, maybe you'd like to try someone tougher. Although these kids seem to be a handful. Now that's an awesome introductory pose there to AXA. If we never even read that epilogue over here, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be mad about it. If we just got an intro to AXA like that, that's perfect. No info. She's just here to rescue and rage with her team. In this uh, example, we've got Mark 10 as a little old robot cowboy. And uh, Matt put on a bunch more clothes than his other incarnation. So a battle ensues. AXA and the team are triumphant. A melee occurs. We have the trope of the machine talking like a machine. Mark, hit their vehicles. Functioning. And then he blasts them there. And we have various other... Uh, of that sort of speech once uh, the robot guy talks. Uh, there's some action going on. Those bad guys get it. They run off to tell the big boss. 
ask uh, semi-volunteers to complete the mission of grandfather, which is to shepherd the kids to a refuge. So they take a little detour here. Matt is not too happy. So now we're running a nursery. It's only a few days, right? That's what the children say. Children think the entire world is only a few days away. But we have nowhere else to go. And so they leave Grandfather buried there in the wasteland with a very poignant panel and move off on their adventure. In our next scene, we meet the leader of this marauding team, Blood Moon. Just a classic bad guy who has a team of men that are more animal than human. Blood Moon vows revenge, of course, because she's only a woman. We'll take care of her in due time. Back at the camp, we see a little bit of background information that Axa is actually infertile because in the dome, everyone is conceived artificially. Well, what a convenient thing, huh? The next morning, we find out that one of the kids on the caravan has some kind of psychic powers. Nathan sometimes sees what is far away or what is to be. And what is to be is that the bad guys are after them. So another battle in, ensues right here. Gun play, sword play. Axa and team seem very capable, but they're overwhelmed for a moment. Axa is captured. And then we have the very ominous continued in this issue. So this leads me to believe that this story was originally in multiple comics and probably it originally said continued next issue. But here it is all collected in one volume in color. So continued in this issue. Kind of anticlimactic. We turn the page for the continuation. Oh, and we see a crucified Axa. Blood Moon gloats over his prey. I guess you're wondering what I'm going to do with you. The thought hadn't crossed my mind. Shut up, woman. Hit her again, blood. And you shut up too, pig. So, stopping right here. Do we think that there will be some kind of betrayal happening here? Because Blood Moon is kind of not a good guy, even to his own woman? There's no way to know, unless we keep reading. Oh, before that, I also like uh, on uh, comics to check out the various other back matter and editorial material and so forth. So pause it here and check this out on your own to find out what other Eclipse goings on are going on, such as the Captain EO comic book to sell at Disneyland. Wow. And various Japanese animation titles coming in or manga. This is like wave one manga coming to the U.S. Yeah, so pause it, read that on your own. Continuing the story, Axa is menaced. Blood Moon's old girlfriend is not too happy. Matt and the team will make a daring rescue. So wouldn't you know it? Yes, there is betrayal because a woman scorned is always a dangerous thing, even a post-apocalyptic wasteland. So she lets uh, Axa go free. Axa offers her, hey, come with me. Why are you enslaved to this guy? You know, come with me and be free. She replies, I live the way I choose. As Blood Moon's woman, I am a queen. What would I be if I went into the wilderness with you? Now run. Thank you. Don't thank me. Just run. And so Axa returns back with her team. They're going to go off to meet the rest of the kids that they went on ahead. They do so, but the marauders come back for them. Another battle ensues. I love this panel here. You really get a sense of the action of those motorbikes just flying into the scene. It's very subtle, but we find out that, you know, Blood Moon knows that she betrayed him. And uh, when we finish with Axa, then it's your turn. That's a good thing. We don't really see too much of the bad stuff. It's all very implied. Uh, but this is the trope of this sort of comic that bad stuff happens at every turn. We don't really need to see it because our imaginations might be even worse. So yeah, battles ensue. They, they're going to get over to the, the refuge, which is where the Star Watchers are at. Battles, gunplay, this and that, and more betrayal. Oh, what are you doing? Something you're familiar with? It's a payoff. Okay, that's really bad writing there. I don't get what is supposed to be happening there. Something you're really familiar with. A payoff. Wouldn't that really be something more? Something you're really familiar with. Betrayal. I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, uh, she breaks free, shoots the big bad, the driver. Everyone's going to be happy. So, Axa, this is twice I've saved you. Maybe I should come with you and make it a career. But wait a minute. Blood Moon's not quite dead. Ungrateful pig. And then one more shot at her. Yeah, this is another one of these tropes. 
it's a very messy future. It's a very violent future. You're one misstep away from death in this savage land of the nuclear wasteland. With no medical facilities at all, she dies in Axe's arms. You saved us. I didn't even know your name. I never had one. My mother's name was Belle. And they leave her grave, Belle's little girl. A small token of esteem from someone who lived a life of savagery and pain. Now she rests. The team goes on. They travel into the refuge where they find more children safe. And the Star Watchers, which are tending to the last vestiges of technology, they have access to a telescope. Now, the weird thing is their telescope seems to pick up a flying craft. Hey, wait a minute. We're out in the savage world of the wastelands and there's a flying craft? The boy is right. We have never observed a flying machine. It will be here in moments. Uh, I've not seen one of them in ages. What is it, Axa? It's a ship from the Dome. There's only one reason it would come out this far. It's come for me. Next issue, Axa the Donor. So that's a cool way to end this issue and keep you coming back for the next one. The inhabitants of the Dome track down Axa even though she turned her back on them. Are they going to force her to return for some reason? Tune in next month. The comic book ends with an amazing ad for Valkyrie because you demanded it. A three-issue limited series with Chuck Dixon, Paul Gulacy, and Willie Bleiberg. These are some beautiful covers and comics. Tell me in the chat if you'd like me to review it at some point. Valkyrie the miniseries. We have a self-portrait of Romero here with his creations. And then a sort of a non-sequitur ad. Then the book ends... With an ad for more comics. Pause it here and check out what these other books were selling at that time and their prices. Take me back. And so that was my review of AXA number one. It's the American debut of this classic European comic. Tell me what you think in the comments. Did you enjoy the adventures of the wasteland with the touches of the sci-fi high-tech stuff here and there? Did this feel like the classic... Mad Max trappings of this world? Were you totally shocked when there was betrayal and double and triple crosses? Were you impressed that Axa is really handy with that sword? Tell me in the comments. Did you ever read this book back in the 80s in color or did you have the black and white comics from Europe? Tell me in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that good stuff. Keep up to date when I publish new videos about eye-catching comics. Help out the channel by visiting the Patreon, patreon.com slash vmcampos. Pledge to the channel for $3.33 a month. Or a one-time pledge. It really helps out the channel. It keeps it going and keeps it growing. Plus, you become a part of it all for $3.33 a month. What a deal. So once again, this week I read AXA, number one, published by Eclipse in 1987. This has been the weekly VM Campos Comic Book Club, and I'll see you next week.